The most anticipated political book of the year with revelations that will be sure to rock Westminster to its very core. Oh, and by the way, it's written by me. See you then. Good night, everyone. This is Talk TV. My friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. to get to grips with the stories that really matter to cut through the spin and the bs want unvarnished and fiery debate then join us for cross talk one o'clock every weekday sorry about this i just realized i didn't have my mic on properly so as i'm taking it off <laughs> you caught me. How are you? I hope you're well this morning. Oh, do you know, it was all, like, caught up in my shirt. And I thought, I'll oh, just whip it back on. And there you go. You caught me in the act. How are you this morning? I hope you're all right. Thanks so much for your company. It's Christo. It's early breakfast. 
It's bright and breezy on a Saturday morning. They're laughing their heads off because I'm like, oh! <laughs> They're laughing their heads off behind the camera. I, I'm glad I've entertained you this morning. Um, it's bright and breezy on a Saturday morning. It's cold. It, it's turned, doesn't it? It has turned. Since the clocks went, it's, it's turned a little bit. It's like milk started to curdle outside, doesn't it? I noticed it this morning. I think I'm going to have to dig out that winter coat. You know that. I really am. It's probably in the basement somewhere. Um, I hope you're well. I hope you're happy. We are, of course, via Sky, via Virgin, via Freeview, via Freesat, or, of course, good old-fashioned traditional DAB, wherever you found us this morning. You're very welcome indeed. Uh, I'm here for the next two hours. We've got Jonathan Liss coming in doing the newspapers and, uh, well, Joe, according to the screen, still. Um, Johnny, have you sorted out this screen? No, I've got nothing on my screen. I've got absolutely nothing on my screen at the moment. Honestly, I think you're supposed to prepare the studio for the presenter before and... Oh, it's chaos this morning. I don't even think we're going to stay on air. So, anyway, we've got Jonathan Liss with the newspapers. I've got some really interesting stories to tell you this morning, um, including the furore over the Marks and Spencers advert, which might well be one of my favourite stories of all time, because people are furious at this Marks and Spencers advert. And, like, OK, I'm not sure whether a lot of the fury is completely justified, but, I mean, it is delicious that whoever came up with that advert has misjudged things so spectacularly. Um, oh, we'll talk a bit about the pro-Palestine marches being on Armistice Day. I don't want to talk about that too long, because... Although I hate to see what's happening with the Palestinians, and I hate to see what's happening with uh, the Israelis that have been hostages and those terrible terror attacks and the threats that have been coming. I feel like that story is a seven-hour rabbit hole we could end up going down. But the, the concept of protests going ahead, I think, is very interesting, and I'm very interested as well about how all of this manifests itself onto British soil. Banks are now tracking your carbon footprint for you. Bet you're thrilled about that one. So we'll talk about that. And, uh, oh, another low-traffic neighbourhood has arrived, and it's chaos. So loads for us to discuss this morning. I've run out of music again, haven't I? Do you know, I talked too long at the start of the show. You really should... I should have a timer, shouldn't I? I should have a little thing, that, that an alarm that sets you shut up so we can finish the music. Oh, so, um... If you want to get in touch, 0344 499 1000. And um, we're going to play. Should we, should we just kick off? Because we are now in the countdown to the festive season. Now, if it were down to me, when I rule the world, there will be... You know, you know I'm an advocate of free speech, other than when I disagree. And... Yeah, that makes sense. And... It, it, uh, I would rule the world via a dictatorship, obviously. I wouldn't have democracy, it's overrated. And I would make it that there can only be very, very limited Christmas stuff before Christmas. Because the problem is we're so sick of Christmas by the time Christmas comes that Christmas ends up being a letdown. And we are making Christmas a letdown. I also... I just want to give you some context before we play this advert. Um, I'm going to defend Marks and Spencers a little bit with this advert. Um, so they've done this advert. We'll play it in a second. But the, the reason people are angry about this advert is because it's not very festive. It depicts Hannah Waddingham, who is a goddess, and um, is, is Tan France in it? Is that the guy that's in it? Um, he's a stylist kind of guy, isn't he? And Sophie Ellis Bexter... She's in it. I don't know why, but I think she looks a little bit like a satellite dish. And um, I, I think she's fabulous, but she's just got one of those really wide heads. And um, but she's very beautiful along with it. And is there another celebrity in it? Or is that it? Oh, I don't know about the Dawn French one. There's a Dawn French one afterwards, is there? Oh, I haven't seen the Christmas food one. Does Dawn French go in and destroy all the food? Oh. Um, 
And the reason people are annoyed is because it starts off being like one of those lovely sort of, oh, my God, I'm going to come in and I'm going to decorate the house and I'm going to do some lovely stuff with the Christmas tree and, oh, my God, isn't it lovely? And then they all seem to have some sort of episode where they then decide to um, smash up all the, 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 the decorations and um, Sophie Ellis-Bexter is, is, is using... Um, I, w I want to... A blowtorch. I was going to say a flamethrower, but that's not a flamethrower, is it? It's a blowtorch. Um, and she's using a blowtorch on, on some food that she's making, and then she decides to blowtorch the Christmas cards. And it, so it's sort of an anti-Christmas Christmas ad. And there's a family playing charades, and someone in the family takes the elf on the shelf and hits it with a baseball bat off the roof. And, you know, it sort of depicts Christmas chaos, and it says, you know what, if you don't like the parts of Christmas, don't do them. Tan France takes a board game and throws it in um, a fish tank. And now, what I found odd about this advert is that some of the things that they appear to be destroying are probably MS products, which I thought that was a bit weird. You know, what is the message of this advert? Take all your MS stuff into the garden and set fire to it, uh, which is odd. Um, but why don't you have a look and a listen yourself if you haven't seen it? And let's do some analysis. Oh, I will do anything for love. You know it's true, and that's a fact. Oh, I will do. But I won't do that. No, I won't do that. I would do anything for love. Anything you've been dreaming of. But I just won't do that. No, no, I won't. No, I just won't do that. I won't. So what you have seen and what you are hearing um, is we can keep it, we can keep it low, keep it low. Is it gone? Is it gone? It's gone. Um, what we you have seen and what we're hearing this Christmas, do only uh, what you love. Had a woman, and she was decided to take all of the Christmas decorations to put them in a shredder, and they're all flying through the air, and everyone's happy about it. Um, we saw Sophie Ellis Baxter using a flamethrower on a uh, well, blowtorch, on uh, a sack of Christmas cards, and uh, we saw the person who was playing charades, she decided to, to hit the elf on the shelf across the, the sky because she was annoyed. Tan France, uh, his partner says to, you know, just, just to start playing a board game, and he picks it up and he throws the board game into the fish tank. And it basically says, you know what, if you don't want to do any of it, don't do it, Right? Now, this is why I have a little bit of admiration for Marks and Spencers on this. And it's because I don't want to be a hypocrite. I think it's monumentally misjudged, but I don't want to be a hypocrite. One of the things that I find a little bit... Um, it, it irks me a little bit, and it makes me smile a little bit when it comes to Christmas adverts. Firstly, we're more obsessed with Christmas adverts now than we are actually what Christmas is about. That irks me a little bit. And it's because shopping and consumerism, and I'm going to sound like a right lefty when I say all of this, because I love a bit of consumerism, you know? I love going and buying stuff that usually I don't need. But that has become the new religion at Christmas, right? Bear with me. There's a, there's, there's a hypothesis here, right? So Christmas has become about stuff. Christmas has become about buying stuff. Christmas has become about being cynical. Christmas has become about, you know, running around like a maniac, buying as much stuff as possible and, um, you know, breaking your neck in uh, at the altar of consumerism, right? Which I'm on board with. <laughs> but what annoys me a bit about Christmas adverts is that they sell you 
in these adverts the very thing that consumerism took away from Christmas. Do you see what I mean? So, um, Christmas is, is, is less about what Christmas is actually about, which is for a religious celebration for people and about family and about it actually not needing to spend a load of money on people and just being together and all that sort of stuff. Christmas is so much less about that than it used to be. But if you watch a Christmas advert of one of the big um, department stores, well, they sell you the complete opposite. Oh, my God, we're all going to sit around and we're going to spend time together. And, oh, look, look at the poor man who lives on the moon who's, who's, who's alone. And, oh, look, there's a dog in a trampoline. Oh, it's so sweet. And, oh, it's so lovely. And, oh, God. Because they sell you the very thing that you could argue they took away from you and took away from Christmas. So I always see those sort of really happy family Christmas adverts as a little tiny bit hypocritical. And so I, I'm going to give m a bit of credit for trying to do a bit of an anti-Christmas advert and saying, you know what, if you don't want to do all of this nonsense, you don't have to do it. Yeah, you don't have to. Um, but I don't know whether the execution of that message is particularly effective because it does look like they're firstly destroying a load of the very products that they sell and secondly, um, I don't know whether that point comes across very much. But of course, if they wanted to make that point, they could say, look, you don't need to buy all of this nonsense for Christmas. Just buy one gift each and get it at m and So I'm not sure the execution is brilliant, but I'm on board with a big, big department store saying, you know what, <clears throat> we're not going to do a happy slappy family scene around the Christmas dinner and, you know, dad getting back just in time for Christmas so that they could all sit around and, you know, what was the one in the street where they were all dancing in the street with, like, Santas and everything? I think it was, was that a Morrison's one last year or an Asda one or something? It's always, oh my God, we're all going to warm our hearts and warm our cockles by watching a lovely Christmas scene and everything. Whereas, of course, that's lost when it comes to Christmas. And it's lost because of the very places that are giving us that advert. Does that make sense? Um, is, is my hypothesis working? They sell you the thing they took away from you. They sell you what they are responsible for us not doing at Christmas anymore. You know? And so I like them going against the grain a little bit, but I do think that the execution is quite poor and I do question the person that decided that setting fire to your own products <laughs> as a way of selling your products um, is wise. Zero three double four four double nine one thousand. Why are people so offended by this advert, do you think? I've described the advert to you. We'll get some calls on the phone. You tell me. Um, oh, this is a good one, because this is a text. <clears throat> um, I wrote an email to m &S saying I was disgusted and offended as a Christian. I mean, they had one job, to make a nice feel-good advert, to make us all feel better in a rubbish world at war. They couldn't do that for virtue signalling. In what world do you want a demonic-looking woman with a flames uh, for pupils setting fire to Christmas cards and... And, 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 and batting a toy soldier with a baseball bat. Well, I think it was the elf on the shelf. And who hasn't wanted to punch an elf on a shelf now and then? Come on. Um, see, I get what you're saying, but... I wish they'd done it a bit differently. I wish it was an advert, because I, I know what you're saying about those lovely feel-good adverts, but I find some of those lovely feel-good adverts a bit hypocritical because they're selling you all the feel-good stuff around Christmas, but what they really want to do is just sell you a load of tat that you don't need. So do you not find some of those feel-good adverts a little bit hypocritical? Do you not find some of those feel-good adverts? Are you not a bit cynical about those? Because I am. So by what you're saying, and I respect what you're saying, and I get the logic completely of what you're saying, how could m and have executed this better? to basically say to people, look, all of the pressure that you've got at Christmas, because I think the point they were trying to make is quite good, that, look, all of this pressure that you're under at Christmas, and really it's only one day, you, you know, do it your way, do it the way you want to. You don't need all of that stuff because all you really need is your nearest and dearest near you. That's it. 
that should have that's what I see would have been a brilliant message for an advert. You know, almost look, it, uh, go and buy something from us, but you don't need to break your neck. It's one day. You know, you, you don't need to do anything that you don't want to, because it's one day. So, how could they have done it better? And I don't know. Do you think that they could have done that better? Um, I love that you're so angry about it, though. Um, another one here. I think the M&S advert is a bit naff. Why couldn't they have had a nativity-themed ad? Being anti-Christmas is not a million miles from being anti-Christian, says John in Sutton. Well, as I said, I think that the, 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 the execution is not good, but I think that the message behind it, we need an advert with that message. Maybe I stand alone here, but we need an advert saying, you know what, just stop stressing so much about it. And just, you know, just make sure that you care about the important stuff at Christmas rather than, you know, the elf on the shelf or all of that stuff. The problem that they've got, though, is you, that they take a flamethrower to Christmas cards and Christmas cards are one of the nice things about Christmas. And... Also, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, she stops playing charades with the family. Well, again, charades with the family is one of the nice parts of Christmas. Oh, I don't know. Um, Aldi adverts are my favourite Christmas adverts because who can be upset by carrots, says Sarah. Oh, someone will be. Someone will be. Remember, food has feelings. Carrots, you know, because don't plants cry? I think someone found that plants cry, so they're probably annoyed when they pull carrots up now, so you probably get banned from doing that. Hey, on that note, your bank is going to start tracking your carbon footprint for you, so we'll talk about that uh, between now and 7 o'clock. And we'll get some of your calls on this M&S ad as well, all here live on Talk TV. Everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Very impressive, well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Ah. <laughs> me and you, conquer time. Who Bye. wins? You. Do you know what I love about tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech rating for this? You like, I'm so rich. <laughs> so, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What, do you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis? No, I am fans. not. Stop pandying to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers, and the National Society for the Preservation of the Habitat of the Lesser Spotted Newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Well, it's almost like those highly done. paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. First thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah. Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. So are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. and We're just asking patients to be patient with us. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google and Facebook and X, uh, formerly known as Twitter? Where is, our, where is our unbiased news going to come from? Welcome to the talk. It's really great to be back. My little darlings. Mm -hmm. Kids think all they have to do is stay at home, be silly, mm -hmm. take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok then, yeah? Problem oh, yes, solved. Please. Yeah. Problem solved. There you go. He's fit as a butcher's dog. Him. Oh, right. <laughs> but, but he's now middle <laughs> class. Three us here, Tess. <laughs> I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know now you're probably going to boot me off the show after <laughs> this now. <laughs> Can right. uh, Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. <laughs> Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. <laughs> Got former PMs all over the joint saying things the last few days. They have indeed, <laughs> yeah. Great first show. You having fun? Oh, a ton of fun. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. <laughs> I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. When I say I am God, you think I'm joking or not? You tell me. I'm not joking. I'd rather do it on camera. No, no, no. no, no. If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Why? We'll explain why. 
How do you feel about that influence that you have? You better be careful. We're coming for your children there, buddy. About my resignation, yes, I'm going to go. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yeah, I'm going. I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Thank God for Talk TV. It's not only the home of common sense, it's the only place where you get the truth. Morning, Christo here on Talk TV. So we're talking about the Marks and Spencers advert, which has been a story that I've been obsessed with this week because uh, uh, love or loathe Marks and Spencers, it's quite spectacular how much they seem to have got this wrong. And um, I was giving my hypothesis previously, saying that I sometimes find those adverts where there are all families sort of sat around uh, buying and eating all the products of a big department store so that they can all sit around together and have a lovely Christmas and family being so important, which is a lovely message. But I find those a little bit hypocritical because, of course, you know, it's the rampant consumerism, which I'm a fan of. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but the rampant consumerism that has probably changed Christmas for the worse. So I kind of feel like a lot of those adverts sell you the dream that they themselves took away from you. It's going a bit deep for 25 past five in the morning, isn't it? Um, and so I really like the idea of an advert that says, you know what, just, just to get rid of the pressure, it's only one day, and actually just worry about the important stuff, which is being with your family and maybe having a gift each, but you don't need to break your neck to have, like, 20 gifts, and you don't need to run around like a maniac, and if the turkey isn't perfect, it's not the end of the world, and, you know, if lunch isn't on the table before the king does his speech, it doesn't really matter, it's fine. You know, that sort of advert I, I'm really in favour of. And that was, I think, what was the methodology behind the Marks and Spencers ad, but I think that the execution is pretty, pretty poor. Um, and someone has pointed out here, uh, Dan from Kent, says, I think it's the part with the blowtorch on the Christmas cards with pictures of the Holy Land, Christo. I think it was obviously filmed before October the 7th. Yeah, well, there's that element as well. Have you seen the, the photo? I mean, this is crazy. But the photograph of the fireplace that people have gone mad about as well. Now, now, was that in the advert, that fireplace, or was that just a photo that Marks and Spencer's put out? So it was an outtake that didn't make the final cut, we think, but they put it out as a photo. And it's some wrapping paper and hats, Christmas hats, it looks like, in a fireplace burning. But the unfortunately, the colours are red, sort of silvery white and green, which resemble the, the, the flag of Palestine. Now, of course, they, it also resembles the flag of Italy, it also resembles the flag of various other places. Um... And so that's created a massive backlash, which, I, by the way, I think is insane. I mean, as if Marks and Spencers are trying to do a subliminal anti-Palestinian message in their advert that they probably filmed six months ago. But anyway, um, that's also a part of it as well. They've had to take away that photograph and make an apology, which is... I think the world have lost their minds. And then I saw people online, right, saying, well, look, there you go. And that the game going in the water that Tan France throws, you know, the board game that he throws into the water, that is resembling to the river, from the river to the sea. And that that's what's going on there. And this, this resembles the burning of the Palestinian people. I mean, people have kind of lost their minds. All right, Linda in London. Morning to you, Linda. Morning, Christo. We were talking about Christmas last week as well, weren't we? we uh, do you know, you and I, I love our discussions about Christmas and everything else. Oh, I love it. But Christo, I mean, oh, come on, it's an advert. I don't see it being a problem. And I think that it's funny. People are reading far too much into it. And do you know what? I think I relate to it because I am the kind of person, if I don't want to do it, I'm not doing it and I'm not going to feel the pressure. And I quite like having an advert that represents how I feel. But the thing that seems to be the issue with it is that, again... I kind of agree with you and I agree with the message, which is, look, this must do it your way. Don't do it in the way that 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 is so pressured. 
but I think they could have executed that message in a far better way that wasn't blowtorching Christmas cards and, you know, smashing up, uh, 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 you know, smashing the elf on the shelf and, 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 and putting uh, Christmas hats in a shredder and things like that. I think that the execution of that actually quite worthy message is very poor. Now I think it's absolutely fine, and I think that also, I mean, you know, every year, you know, I had these expectations, especially when I got married, and you know, you see the films, and the loving, you know, couple, they're putting the Christmas tree up together, and it's all romantic and it's all beautiful, and then they sat down, snuggled up in front of the fire with a glass of wine. That's what I aspire to. The reality is that I say to my husband, "Put that ball ball there again, and I'm going to put it somewhere else." We have an argument over the lights. I threaten to put them in the bin every year. I think it's realistic, and I think, you know, that's part of the fun in our house for Christmas. We love each other. It's all fine after. But it's just reality, isn't it? But is that the... Me but do you get what you're saying from the Marks and Spencer's advert? Because I'm not sure I do. Yeah, I do, but then I'm that kind of person that, as I say, I will upend a board game, and I have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I... That I kind of <laughs> well, I just cheat. I mean, I love Monopoly because I'm I cheat because I think that's the, the 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 I think that's the well any game I'll try and cheat because I think that that's part of the game, especially Monopoly. Monopoly is so ruthless, capitalist game that, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you, you, you know, if I'm taking money from the bank, I'll take more. I'll if I'm paying someone their rent and I can get away with it, I'll I'll pay them less. You know, I'll do all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I just think, honestly, I was re one of my favourite Christmas adverts was 2013. It was, a, it was a KFC advert, and in it, they were kind of like all saying, you know, this, it was like a musical number. Um, look it up if you don't remember it. It's so funny. And it's basically like, all year round, I want to rip your head off, but obviously on Christmas Day, you know, we sit together nicely. And I just thought, you know what, that's the kind of reality for a lot of us. And I think it's funny. There's a lot of really dark stuff going on in the world. People are finding dark stuff in everything as you've just pointed out and i think it's funny and people do feel the pressure and we've all felt like ripping up the decorations at one time or another or ignoring the family or chucking the elf out the window we've all felt like that it's relatable and it's funny um do you get that they're trying to sell any products though because that's the other weird thing they don't need to. I mean, we all know that that's what they're trying to do. But loads of adverts have been like that over the years. Was it last year or the year before the Sainsbury's advert? And it was about, they had James Corden singing and it was um, that he, you know, wasn't going to buy any presents and the greatest gift that you can give someone is yourself and your time. So we've had loads of adverts like that. And I think it's fine. People are going to shop in Marks and Spencers regardless, aren't they? God, I mean, James Corden at Christmas. Actually, in fairness, it. in fairness, I have to say I'm saying that because I'm being a popular, a populist <laughs> idiot. Because I actually think that Gavin and Stacey is 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 a work of genius, and I think that he he to have come up with that is brilliant. And Ruth oh, Jones. I love it. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, it's, wait, it's a work of genius. Think... That uh, that series is absolutely brilliant, and I didn't like it first time round. I didn't get it and then I watched it years later literally just a few years ago and oh my word it's absolutely brilliant we need more Christmas specials that's the thing that's the thing we should all be moaning about is Christmas telly it's rubbish Has, have the rubbish. schedules come out yet no, but it's always rubbish. Unless something amazing happens and they do some sort of amazing Christmas specials, the last few years it's been rubbish. I and mean, we haven't got, you know, Only Fools and Horses. You used to love the Christmas. Oh, you used to love please. that. It it's used to be brilliant. Yeah, all that stuff. We don't have any of that. Even Gavin and Stacey, you know, talking about that, we had, you know, the... Um, the re that, it? that was brilliant when they, when oh, they amazing. redid that. Um, amazing. Yeah, I don't think the Christmas Day schedules have come out yet. We've got, we'll have EastEnders. Oh, I love a bit of EastEnders. Oh, I love EastEnders on Christmas Day. It's brilliant. I really do love it. But, Chris, I just think, let's have a bit of fun. Let's just not read too deeply into an advert and make out that it's somehow, you know... Strictly Zionist special. Or, There'll be a Strictly know. special. I'm not a fan of Strictly. I know that we might fall out over that, but no, I could never get into oh, so Strictly. I, I've... I've, I've fallen in love with uh, Strictly this year. I really have. Okay, so I'm look I, f I think I've found a few bits. Okay. That that are going to be on 
on uh, Christmas Day um, on the BBC. This isn't confirmed. Mm. Um, OK, so Doctor Who at ten past six. Oh, I love Doctor Who. Very exciting. Strictly Come Dancing Christmas Special is on before that. Mm. Call the Midwife Christmas Special. Mm. No. That's on for an hour and a half. It's overdone. They've done all the storylines now. Michael McIntyre's Christmas Wheel. Oh, oh, I love the wheel. Oh, do you? Oh, I do. Oh, I'm not sure that I could handle Michael McIntyre at Christmas. I don't know if I can oh, keep, it, keep my turkey down. Oh, no. Honestly, stop being, honestly, stop being miserable about adverts and game shows. Just, it's it's all about... That's my Christmas. job. It's my job, Linda. Well, um, well... EastEnders, looking forward to that. Can't wait. Uh, Someone dies. Mrs... is not like a bit of murder at Christmas. Well, talking of murder, Mrs Brown's Boys <laughs> Christmas special. I mean, that, that would make you want to commit murder. <laughs> Um, BBC News and Weather. I mean, that's the highlight for me so far, is the BBC News and Weather. Um, <laughs> My husband likes the weather, so he'll look forward to that. And then there's, uh, on Christmas night, which I think is probably a bit of poetry or something, and then uh, The Vicar of Dibley, which is a repeat. Oh, I love it. Oh, I, I love it. Especially the one with the... Do you remember when she had about ten Christmas dinners? Yes. Because she didn't want to offend everybody, and that goes, we go full circle. That's the thing, don't put pressure on yourself, have fun, have a giggle, do it your way. You're probably going to have a bit of a meltdown, you're probably going to fall out with a member of your family, but it'll all be all right well, in the end, because it don't, usually is. Don't forget, Linda, and this is mm. wonderful news for everyone, and it's the mm. news that, that the UK have been has been waiting for, frankly. Mm. Christo's Christmas Cracker will be back on Christmas morning... What's and that? It, it, I'm going to be on Talk TV Christmas morning. Um, I'm doing Yay. a show between 7am and 11am. I'm doing a four-hour spectacular live. It's the only live programme on Talk TV that day, and it'll be me for four hours. I'll be, I'll be opening presents and eating breakfast, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. What do you mean you'll see what you can do? Get me on in the background. I'll be in a hotel. I won't be at home. Well, the hotels have got televisions, Linda. They've got radios, Linda. Come on, Linda. All right, okay. Honestly. All right, thank you. You take care. See you later. That's Linda in London. Yes, Christmas morning. Uh, And we're doing the four hours. I listened. We've taken it on board. We've taken your feedback on board. Because last year we did seven till ten, and it was like, oh, oh, it's finished. We'd only just cracked open the champagne at that point, so we're doing 7 till 11 this year. It is confirmed. It is in the schedule. I am here. And I think, as well, and she's absolutely as mad as a box of frogs, Ingrid Tarrant will be doing it with me. I, I always, I'm always sort of clinging on to the desk a little bit when Ingrid's in. I love her dearly, but I'm always like, oh, my God, are we going to be taken off air? So we'll be doing that on Christmas morning. Um, we'll be speaking to some of our favourite talk TV presenters. Um, <laughs> that'll fill five minutes. And uh, they... <laughs> that's terrible. I shouldn't say that, honestly. Uh, uh, we'll be looking back at the highlights of me on talk TV over the last 12 months. That'll be shorter than five minutes. And um, so David Bull, I think, we'll catch up with. Um, Oh, I think we're going to do Lizzie Stuffs Her Bird again. We'll catch up with Lizzie Cuddendy when she's cooking. We might... Do you want to catch up with my mother that morning? Because we can get Mother F on. Um, So she'll come on. Um, We'll do some of your calls. Um, Oh, I'll be emptying my Christmas sack again. Um, because I always like to pull something out of my sack for you every single uh, Christmas morning, and so that will be... It'll be running over, and I'll be uh, emptying that for you. And um, I will do a champagne taste test as well. Are you writing all this down, Johnny? Um, And uh, who's out? Do we know who the producer is that day? Is it you? It's not you yet. All right. Um... And I don't know what else we can do. We'll definitely need to do a Christmas champagne taste test. Um, and I'm also doing Boxing Day in the afternoon, one till four, so we'll do a Bloody Mary taste test on that one um, as well. We did that last year because you need a Bloody Mary on Boxing Day, right? That, I mean, we're not savages in this country. You need a Bloody Mary on Boxing Day and a little glass of fizz on Christmas morning. So we need to push the fizz back to 10am, otherwise I'll be slurring again at the end of the show like I was last year. Um... And I think as well what we did last year was 
Um, we need to dig out the running order from last year, which we'll is do the same thing. Um, we spoke to... I really like on Christmas morning... Um, first, I like just speaking to you and finding out what you're up to and, you know, have you got your spuds in yet and are you stuffing the turkey? What are you actually doing? Where are you going? Just give me your plans. But secondly, I really like speaking to um, whom I call the unsung heroes of Christmas. You know, those people. I always find that 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 fascinating. You know, the people that make Christmas happen without us knowing that, 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 it, that they're there. So, you know, the people who are in A&E on Christmas Day, the people who are broadcasting, you know what I mean? The people who are, are you know, on the TV and the radio, uh, the people who are, um, you know, in the control room of 999, the people who you don't actually see them and you don't think they're there and you drive out and you think, oh, God, the streets are all empty, no-one's working. Well, actually, there are loads of people working. You know, people who are all the chefs in top London restaurants that are doing all the prep um, because they're, they're serving that day. The waiters and waitresses that are going to be waiting on people, the hotel staff. There are so many people that are still making life tick on Christmas Day. And I like you to call me and tell me if you're one of those people. So we'll definitely do that on Christmas morning. And you kind of, it's a chance for you to give yourself a shout out as to what it is you're up to. And uh, so there'll be loads. All right. Now, when we are back... We will... Oh, we found the running order for last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, we did Lizzie Cundy. Oh, we did Hannah Hope. We had her on. Um, we had Kinsey with A Right Royal Christmas. She was on, live from LA. We had the Director of Client Services at Crisis. And we did Christmas Down Under as well. Oh, there we go, just fire that one up again. Loads of stuff there. She did What's on the Box. Um, so we did What's in Lizzie's Turkey and What's in Anna's TV Box. So there you go. Loads that we had on Christmas morning. Um, we'll do the same thing again this year. And when we come back, we'll talk to Kevin in Basingstoke about this Marks and Spencer's advert. All here live on Talk TV. <laughs>
morning. Christo here on Talk TV. Let's talk... Oh, did we lose the person we were talking to? No? Ah, oh, they hung up. Well, they're probably waiting so long with me prattling on. Let's go to Jackie in Manchester. Morning, Jackie. Good morning, Christo. I had a nightmare last night. Did you? What happened? Two hours of fireworks with my dog that was absolutely frantic. Oh, and no. It louder and louder and louder. It was horrendous. She was cowering. Oh, she was. I tried to get her in the vet to get her something to sedate her because she's very nervous anyway. But it was horrendous and we're going to get it tonight and tomorrow night. And, and do you not, do you not, because what I do is I, I, I close the curtains... I yeah, move to I a room in the house that is as quiet as possible and, and then I either take the TV, radio or stereo or something with me and turn it up as loud as possible. Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 and the trouble is that the houses are that close to me that you, you can't get away from it. There's no room in the house where you can... I, I, I know, are people the having their own fireworks in their gardens? Yeah, and oh. it, it was horrendous. So I would ban that. I would have yeah. all the things that we ban. The fact that we still allow people to have private fireworks is ridiculous. Fireworks should just be at displays. I don't understand why you're allowed to buy fireworks and put them on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, she was she was distraught last night. Terrible. Oh, bless her heart. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. No one thinks about that. And also, I think that it would be OK, or at least bearable, if it was on bonfire night. You know, at least yeah. then you go, right, well, it's one night, I know it's coming yeah. up, I can make plans. You know, my friend, for instance, who's got a dog, has gone away for a couple of days. You know, yeah. it's, you, you can make plans, but it's, you, it's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It starts about, you know, 1st of September, you start getting fireworks. And then you get them on New Year's Eve as well. Yeah. Everybody's setting off fireworks on New Year's Eve. And again, if it's an organised display, I can go, right, OK, I know where it'll be, I could not mm. be anywhere near it, I know what time it's going to be happening, and that's great. But it's yeah. it's the fact that it's so random. I, I feel your pain because my little dolly, um, she, um, uh, she's got a real problem in the park at the moment. I'm so worried about her running off because she will not come properly into the park because I think she associates the park with the bangs and the fireworks. So oh, she's in a, a right state at the moment about it all. Dee Dee doesn't give two hoots, but Dolly yeah. really gets scared. But she was more traumatised because she was uh, on the street. Um, so... Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that, it's, anyway it's Christmas. Yes. Christmas, Why are people Christmas. so angry about the Marks and Spencer's advert? That's what we've been talking about. Well, I think there has been, um, over the last few years, there's been this drip, 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 of it's people attacking things that make us British and our traditions, um, our history. Um, th th there's been so much this anti-British stuff. And when it comes to Christmas, um, not only is it one of our massive traditions, it's also... Um, you know, for people, it is a, a, a religious time, et cetera, et cetera. And I think what's infuriated people is that when you've got places like Barnard Castle that are having a winter festival instead of a Christmas festival and are banning Santa Claus because they want to be inclusive, I think people see their culture being attacked. No, and, and you are... Where you're absolutely right, and I agree, is that it is... It, it, because there's... There's sort of Christmas and then there's the religious side of Christmas. Now, many people say, yeah. look, they're the same thing, but I think that, that there is a there are two lanes to Christmas, aren't there, I think, for a lot yeah. of people. Some people take it very seriously religiously. Some people just see it as a chance to have a booze up, have a, have a few friends over and, and, and buy as much as possible and put uh, and put themselves under loads of pressure. Now, the problem is that because the lines are blurred between those things, if you are doing something that is anti-Christmas, you're, you're, you're going to find yourself being anti the religious celebration part of it. I don't, I don't buy that. Because really? but, no, but I, th I thought that was your I, point. I, no, no, what I mean is that 
the, the the symbols that we we have for Christmas, like the Christmas cards, we have the meals and the hats, and you know we 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 decorate the tree. And I don't know what it's like in other people's houses, but for me, I absolutely adore Christmas. I adore it. Um, I love all the preparations. I love having the family around, and I love doing things that symbolise what Christmas is about. Like, for instance, a couple of years ago, there were two old ladies that I found out were on their own on Christmas Day, and I arranged to bring them round to my house for Christmas lunch with my family. That's a nice bought, thing to do. Bought and presents, because I couldn't bear the fact... That they're on their own. That, that they were on their own Do you know? Do you know, do, you know, do you know what it is, Jackie? It, 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 it should have been... Because I think that the message... I stand by that the message that they were going for, I think, is valid. I.e., look, if this was the message, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think there's real validity to a... a look, it doesn't matter. A, a Christmas almost, it doesn't matter. I.e., it doesn't matter if you forget someone that you sent a card to. It doesn't matter if your turkey is a bit dry. It doesn't matter if yeah. the person you've got, you got them the wrong size of the jumper. Nice M&S jumper you could have put a product in. Because actually what matters is the, the, the people you're with. Don't sweat the small stuff at Christmas because actually, you know, the decoration's not being perfect. The board game you don't want to play. You know, the, none of that really matters because what matters is the real meaning of Christmas. Had that been what they had done, I think that would have been an absolute hit. But let me pose this question to you. Yes. Would they have done it with other cultures, festivals, such as... I knew that would Eid, be your question, and I think you're right, and, and I think that's a very, Island. very, very good question. Could you imagine if it was sort of, you know, this Ramadan... Yeah. Do it this way, and you know, like, like yeah. I don't know, smashing up yeah. um, a table full of food for the the, the 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 Ramadan celebration. I don't know. People would be absolutely think, up in arms. Exactly, it, it wouldn't happen. But it seems we are open. We are fair game um, for for our uh, cultural norms to be. Um, you know, uh, sort of not attack, but dismissed and I think that's what's infuriated people I think that that's a very very good point I do I think that's a really really fair point that it's I think I think the best part of what you said though and it might not actually be I think that was the bit you disagreed with me <laughs> um, <laughs> is that it's it's the religious side of it that that you're kind of invalidating you're blow torching religious Christmas cards, yeah. and yeah. that that you would never do that with another religion, no. and but I th I think that the message itself is probably a good message. They just executed it spectacularly poorly. Yeah, I mean they they, they picked out the things that that make Christmas Christmas, and what they've done is they've they burnt Christmas cards, they battered an elf. Um, they put paper hats in the fire and it's this answer yeah. message. Whereas what it should have been is they could have so done that but we should be in advertising, Jackie, because they could have so done it better but by making the point, oh, you know, oh, you're playing that board game again and you sort of roll your eyes but you do because that's yeah. what you do at Christmas. Yeah. Oh, oh, your Christmas decorations have fallen down. You know what? Yeah doesn't really matter. You know, oh, you've bought that Marks and Spencer's jumper for your son. Oh, it's the wrong size. But yeah. you know what? He can always change it. We've got a brilliant returns policy. So it really doesn't matter. Oh, you know, your, your, your mother-in-law is turning up late, you know, yeah. in the new yeah. M&S coat that she's going to be wearing at, at, uh, at Christmas. But it doesn't matter because, you know, you can hold the food. You know, all of those things... And, and some... the dread with the person that you know you, you, you're going to get a, a, an awful present off, but you still smile, you still say thank you. Yeah. And it, it, you know, you, you know what's coming, but that is all the little nuances. And it doesn't. It, it and so the the theme should have been, it, it none of the big stuff matters because it's actually about. Yeah. 
you know, that is what makes Christmas and the things that go wrong make Christmas and the things that aren't yeah. perfect make Christmas and don't be so stressed about it, um, but just do it whilst wearing M&S leisure wear. You know, that should have been the theme of it because uh, I think actually that's sort of the message they're trying to give, but I think that they have executed it spectacularly badly. Yeah, no. No, I agree. I think it was a negative. It came across as a negative message instead of you could have made it a positive one. Well, yeah, it's coming With across as screw humor. Christmas. It's coming across you know. as screw Christmas altogether yeah. and screw the things that people like about Christmas, whereas what it should have been was stop striving for perfection at Christmas. That's what it should have been. Stop yeah. trying to think everything needs to be perfect. Stop trying to think that, you know, that... that... And also, you know, if you don't want to play the board game... You know, let them get on with it and have a drink in the corner because it doesn't really matter. You know, all of that stuff doesn't really matter. You don't need to feel oh, I've guilty. Had, I've had karaoke machines and all sorts on Christmas Day. I mean, we've really gone for it. Um, you do what God, you, you were want just complaining to. about the noise from the fireworks. Ye gods, I would imagine your neighbours, they're probably getting their sweet revenge no, on you. This was before the dogs. Um, but we, we, you know, we've really gone for it uh, because we celebrate our being together and, you know, um, everybody does their own thing and that, that's fine. But the tenants of what, what we do, people still hold them dear, whether they like him or they don't like him. They still have the Christmas dinners. They, they still usually have the families around. Yeah, it can end up in a row, but... You know, they could have done the advert. But none of it matters. Mm. None of it ultimately matters if you've got your nearest and dearest with you. That is basically... But I honestly think that that was where they started with their message. I think that probably when they sat down with their storyboard for this advert, that was actually where they started. But what they've ended up doing is say is becoming too anti-Christmas yeah. rather than too anti-the-nonsense around Christmas. I mean, they could have made it quite funny. It could have been quite tongue-in-cheek with all the things that you know that are going to come on Christmas Day, like the presents and the jumper that's not going to fit and this, that and the other. So it, it could have been, you know, yeah. amusing that people recognise and think, oh, yeah, that's what we get on Christmas Day, but they didn't, but yeah. there we go. Well, there we go. You're right, you're right. Uh, so probably a sound message very, very poorly executed. By the way, I've got to tell you something, Jackie. Sorry, before what? you go. You're still there. Someone has yeah. messaged. Hang on, who is it? Who is it? Uh, oh, God, now I've lost it. Uh, apparently, according to this person, who I've now just lost, uh, tell Jackie that um, there is a radio station and um, I, I can't tell you which radio station it is, but it rhymes with Brassic and it might play music which is like Mozart and Beethoven and the like. All oh, right. And they do a special show, which is Soothing for Dogs. Oh, how fantastic. For, for fireworks. Oh. Well, whoever sent it in, tell them thank you very much. Um, and I'm really that. sorry I can't find um, who sent that to me because they were trying to um, be very, very helpful uh, towards you, and I'm really sorry. Oh, oh there, wow. we go, there we go. Um, it's Cherry Blossom. says, tell Jackie there's a radio station um, that do a special programme for pets on bonfire night. It's supposed to distract from the noise. Oh, that's lovely. So Cherry that's Blossom lovely. did that. So thank you, Cherry Blossom. All right, oh, take care. You. See you later. Bye. Bye. That's, 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 that's Jackie. We've put that to bed. Um, all right, loads of messages on this, which we will get to, including Dean saying that my hypothesis that many of these lovey-dovey Christmas adverts sell you the, 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 the very thing that consumerism took away from you is nonsense. Thank you for that. Uh, Thomas says, Jackie from Manchester is wonderful. I agree. Um, morning, Christo. Um, Dallas says, Christmas is just me and the dogs, so I will be with you Christmas morning every step of the way. Good. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Shorty says, Morning, Christo. On Christmas TV, you forgot the Wizard of Oz and the Blimmin' Sound of Music. Thank you for that. Nick says, I'm looking forward to your Christmas cracker on Christmas Day. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, lots of you messaging. You know what? I will get to some more of your messages as well. So many of you are sending texts about some of the stories. We haven't even got on to these marches, which we will talk about in the next hour. Um, we'll also talk about how banks are helping you with your carbon footprint by tracking you. 
Yay. So we'll talk about that as well and your reaction. Jonathan Liss will be here going through the newspapers next. It's Talk TV. <laughs> This is Talk TV. Lively debate, intelligent conversation. Join me, Dr David Bull, on Talk TV every week. When you're selecting your next car, choose one that's in vogue. Motor Vogue. We have so many brands all under one roof. From compact city cars to spacious family cars, SUVs to electrics. Whatever type of car you're after, you'll find it at Motor Vogue. Not after new. Motor Vogue also has a fantastic selection of great quality used cars and vans. So get your next car from Motor Vogue in Bury St Edmunds. Big choice. That's our style. Everything is fun on a trip to Texas. You could do this. Or try this. It doesn't even matter what you do. Actually, it does matter. I'm obsessed with food and sports and music. This is our trip to Texas. You can go get your own. Bullard's Coastal Gin is inspired by the Norfolk coast, where pine forests meet marshlands and vast sandy shores. Savour the delicate saltiness, vibrant citrus flavours and hand-foraged herbaceous botanicals. Award-winning sustainability and luxury. Flame distilled, handcrafted and hand-bottled, our beautiful bottles for life are designed to be reused with our recyclable eco-refill pouches. Visit bullardspirits.co.uk. It's time to say Britain's serious money, Super 7. At Money Supermarket, we're on a mission to change saving forever. Introducing the Super Save Club. On top of the big savings you could already make with us on car insurance, broadband and more, we'll give you rewards to spend however you want. Eyes on the prize, please. Savings can't wait. The new Super Save Club from Money Supermarket. Saving supercharged. Train, play and stay at The Nest, a high-quality football break in Norfolk. State-of-the-art pitches, first-class facilities and on-site accommodation and catering. Everything you need for the perfect football trip for your team. Training, fixtures and excursions for all ages and all levels. The Nest hosts teams from all around the country and abroad. Play competitive fixtures or mini tournaments against local sides. Search The Nest Norwich and start planning your team's visit now. I had weight loss surgery to enjoy more time with my children. I did it to help improve my type 2 diabetes. I did it to enjoy long walks and to feel more healthy. I did it to finally enjoy holidays. I did it to be healthy for my family. Tonic weight loss surgery are helping thousands of people nationwide get their lives back. Inquire today for a free consultation. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Cross Talk. One o'clock every weekday. Good morning. How are you this morning? It's Christo here on Talk TV. Where am I? Where am I? I'm a little bit off centre. I don't know why that is. Any time you like, you've been left wing. What, Jonathan Liss? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm off centre. I'm not. I'm, I'm to the left. Is that what you're saying? Actually, the first, the first time you're right, you've ever been to the left. It is the first time in my life I've ever been to the left. Look, I'm talked TV's lefty. <laughs> I am considered the lefty on this station. I am. I really am. Page off. I just, honestly, I, I don't know how people have got that impression. I think it's because I'm a bit anti-Brexit. Anyway, that is the sound of Jonathan Liss. Now, remember the last time Jonathan was on, um, you found him less irritating than you do normally, <laughs> and you sort of liked him by the end of it. So just keep that in mind like a life raft when you hold on to what he's probably going to be saying over the course of the next hour, because I am here to um, 
I guess to 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 groom you into liking him because mm. I know on many other shows that he's on he's really irritating and I I agree he's really irritating on many of the shows that he's on. So um, we've got him for the next hour. Well, that was starting off starting to mean to go on. <laughs> I think I'm being well, nice, aren't I? Well, like, by telling everyone that I'm going to be incredibly irritating, just brace, no, because, brace yourself to hate this guy. No, because on this show you're less irritating because I've managed to bring just out who I am. I just I'm, I am who I am I've across managed... the board of across a sweet of television and radio programmes. I've managed to bring out the sparkle <laughs> in you that makes you mildly less irritating um, than you are on other programmes. Right, that's okay. a very, very big compliment that I just well, made. I mean, you. Vanessa doesn't find me irritating. Oh, well, that's not what she says behind your back. <laughs> so, uh, when we get in outrageous. a few moments, uh, we'll talk about some of uh, the big stories, including the M&S advert. Jonathan is very keen to talk about that. Uh, plus, we'll talk about these marches... Uh, on Armistice Day, should they be cancelled? The Daily Express today is calling this pro-Palestine march a hate march. And uh, banks are tracking your carbon footprint via your spending. So we'll talk about your reaction to that all here on Talk TV. And uh, by the way, I should say, um, and Jonathan, you, you can't, you're not involved in this. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much. The ratings have come in, I should say. Uh, no, they have. And um, I'm. Uh, this show is up 72% on a year ago. We've nearly wow. doubled our audience. And on the last three months, we've gone up by 23%. And uh, that's our Radio DAB audience. Now, bearing in mind, um, uh, three months ago, we were up 185%. <laughs> we're doing all right. Can so, you say what the numbers are? Um, I don't know. I only know the percentages. Uh -huh. But, I mean, it's, 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 it's big, apparently. Lots of people are Fantastic. listening to this programme on radio. Is it people who wake up very early or people who are just coming in from a night out? I will take anyone. <laughs> I will take anyone. Wherever you found us, whether you're here or abroad, I don't care. I don't care whether you are literally sort of mangled after having been out. Maybe you're literally mangled. Call your ambulance, people. Do not, do not turn on your television. <laughs> um, but yes, so thank you very much indeed. As our audience continues to grow, um, particularly on this programme. So natural charisma. Thank you for... Why are you being so nice to me? That's very unnerving. Mm. I, I, I'm actually quite a nice person. Are you? Yeah, I am. OK. Well, we'll find... I'll be the judge of that, because um, let's talk about this uh, Christmas advert. Let's just get that out of the way, because it's been what we've been talking about in the last hour. Um, we, can, we can maybe play a little bit of it, but why do you think that people are so angry about this Marks & Spencer's advert? I mean, you'd have to ask them. I, I honestly can't well, find you, anything you in it. You are a commentator. Find... You no, are no, 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 finger no. on the pulse. I honestly can't find anything in it to find objectionable in the slightest. It's good fun. It's 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 amusing. It's it's unlike normal Christmas adverts. I mean, look. First of all, I have to say, we are a country of the permanently offended, and I find it so strange and interesting that it's the people complaining about this that spend all the rest of the year complaining about the lefty snowflakes who get offended at the slightest thing. Grow up. Look at yourselves. It is not important. There are serious things happening in the world. We, how unserious can we possibly be that people are getting into such a lather about an M&S Christmas advert? It does not matter. It doesn't. The thing that offends me the most is it's being broadcast at the beginning of November. Nothing about Christmas should start until the 1st of December. I hold fast that rule. Listen, a woman in makeup yesterday offered me a mince pie. You have no idea how hard it was for me to say no, but I will not break my rule about the 1st of December, no matter how appealing the temptation is to break that. Oh, I prefer to mince pie. Right. Oh, very good. Actually, that was very good. That was very good. I wish you hadn't done the whole, like, the, the boom thing, because yeah. that would have been actually a very good sort of deadpan line. But, you know, thank we'll you. approve on the delivery as we go on. Um, thanks very much. Um, so, I think that Jackie, who I spoke to before the news, made a very, very good point. And I think that people don't get annoyed by the content so much. I think that the content, the message of that advert, which was like, just kind of do it your way and don't worry about all the stress around it, I think it was a really good message. I think it was very poorly executed. Because I think that people get annoyed that what they see as something that is traditional and especially something that is seen as British and traditional, right? Bear with me. And, you know, things like Christmas cards being blowtorched and things like that. Um, I think they get annoyed. And the point Jackie made, which I think is a very fair point, 
is that if you take Christmas seriously as a religious celebration, that's going to be offensive, especially in the context of the fact that, that there would never be any other religious celebration that a big brand would take a blowtorch to. Oh, it's a, we're a Christian country. Oh, why, don't, why don't we become a Muslim country then? See how um, people uh, like it then. I mean, but, but why is it allowed just because we're in a Christian country? Because, it's a, make because, it any, because it, it, Christians are not being oppressed in this country. I'm sorry, but they're not, OK? And, oh, uh, I think that there is a different standard to which Christians are held to. Are they being oppressed? Probably not. But I think there is a different standard to which you can... <coughs> I think you can say things and, and act in a way towards Christianity in this country this is, that you can't about other religions. This is nothing about... This is nothing about religion at all. It is the most willful... It's a religious it's celebration. Most, it's, it's... Christo, Christmas is technically, obviously... The Feast of Christ. Of course it's a Christian festival. That has nothing to do with a Christmas that is celebrated by the majority of the population in this country. The majority of this population, I, funnily enough, as a Jewish person, actually do go to Midnight Mass. I'm in the minority because I happen to love it. And I always go to uh, lessons of, of nine carols um, because I love the, I love the carol I, scene. I, 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 the but, you know, I am, I'm not, a, of, I'm not, I'm certainly, I'm, I'm not a religious person. I'm certainly not a Christian religious person. But I love the cultural element to it. And it's completely separate. The MS have uh, had a him, he's not blow torching a church. Let's grow up. <laughs> Sophie Ellis Baxter's got the Sophie Ellis Baxter, Saint doing, Sophie Ellis Baxter. Doing, but she is blow torching Christmas cards. So what? Christmas cards are sent by people, Jewish, Christian, of no religion at all. It doesn't matter. It's about. People get in such a tears about we've got to do so many things. We've got to send Marjorie, um, the, my my neighbour from 25 years ago, a Christmas card. It just adds so much stress to people. They've got to the family politics to navigate, the, the shopping, the incredible expense of gifts to not negotiate. And this advert's just saying, you know what? Obviously, it's an advert. It's trying to sell you stuff. We know that. You know, I don't believe that we should sort of you know hold adverts up as a sort of paragon of virtue. They are trying to sell us stuff. But the advert is simply saying, you know what? It doesn't matter. You just do you. If you don't want to send the Christmas card to Marjorie, for your mate, your neighbour from 25 years ago, you don't have to. It won't matter. That is the but I, the I, I do think that that's the message, but I think executing it by by blowtorching Christmas cards... It's a and, joke. It's a joke. I, I think that... Why, how, why have we lost our sense what? of knowing, humour? Knowing... I actually started off this programme defending m &S, going, look, I actually... At least they're trying something different and the message is good. But knowing now that, that that means I would agree with you means that I... Have. You are so petty. <laughs> you really are petty. A petty okay. man. Um, Dan from Kent says, My God, have I woken up in a parallel universe because Jonathan Liss is talking common sense. <laughs> You've not been listening to me hard enough. I always talk common sense. OK, all right. That's why I'm on this channel. Don't overplay your part. Um... <laughs> I oh but Andy has balanced this out. Right, okay. I'm normally quite resi resilient and tolerant, but when that lefty word I won't use <laughs> comes on my screen, I leave. Um, and yet here you are sending emails, so you haven't gone very far. No, uh, Andy, you don't need to leave because you know he's all right, really. Um, well, so what happened to tolerance and you know, welcoming other people's perspectives? Wouldn't it be a boring world if everyone just agreed that the M and S Christmas advert was a terrible thing? Um, and Margot, bless you, Margot. This is a really poignant message. My husband died in a car crash on the 23rd of the 12th, 18. Um, so what would that be, five years ago? I own our village pub. Christmas Eve is a big deal, feast, carol, celebration. So I still opened and I wished a happy new Christmas on what was the worst Christmas ever for me because there's enough misery in the world, says Margot. That's amazing, Margot, you did that. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, and some of the messages. I mean, I won't read out all of the messages. Congratulations. Are they all me. abusive? No, a lot of them are congratulating me on my audience figures. It would be oh, very... Oh, yeah, muzzle tov. Self muzzle tov, Christo. Thank you. It'd be very self-indulgent to read those No, out. go on, then. Congratulations, Beyond Christo. Brand. Well deserved <laughs> for your listening figures. Thank you uh, for that. Um, <laughs> You're such a David Brent, aren't you? You're literally <laughs> oh, yeah, Alan Partridge. Yeah, yeah. You're literally Alan Partridge yes. sat there but in, your, in your little studio. Absolutely. Uh, Jonathan so, is right. I've been congratulated on my new figures. I have, I, well, if I don't blow my trumpet, no-one else will. Oh, hey. Jonathan is right. <laughs> 
Those three words are very rarely uttered in this studio. Uh, why have we become so sensitive about an advert, uh, says Lynn in Essex. Thank you for your kind words, Lynn, as well. I personally think m are going to love this. Any publicity is good publicity Exactly, for them. exactly. They absolutely love it. It's so counterproductive. People who say, boycott m &S. Every time you say boycott m and m and wins because m and becomes the conversation. This is, this is sort of... Capitalism, consumerism 101, people. Uh, time for people to grow up and stop looking for things that they can complain about, says Phil in Sheffield. Uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, tell Jonathan, says John, that lefty snowflakes are not the only ones allowed to be offended. Christianity is marginalised in Britain. So right-wing snowflakes can be offended too, is that what you're saying? Well, that, I, I think John is just saying that Christians have the right to be offended if they wish to. Well, be. I mean, everyone has the right to be offended. I just had, don't, can I can I feel can feel be free to disagree with it if I want to be. If um, I want to. What else have we got here on some of them? And there was another bit to this, which oh, I thought was extra go. special, ridiculous. Uh, which is that M&S, I think, shared an outtake image of some oh Christmas my God, socks that's so ridiculous. in a fire grate, and people said, "Oh, it's." Well, I think I, I, I can't decide if it was meant to be an anti-Semitic thing because the colours were the colours of the Palestinian flag. I can't decide if it was meant to be anti-Semitic because they were the colours of the Palestinian flag or if it was meant to be anti-Palestinian because they're in a fire grate because obviously anti people were burning. I think it was anti-Palestinian, but yes, it was supposed it's to so be. so stupid. This was filmed months ago. They don't just film the advert in, you know, two weeks before it's broadcast. And have you and seen not... the bit as well? And that... then m and withdrew it and apologised. Yeah. This is so, so we've, stupid. We've Why have we become image. so stupid? We've got that image. Have we got that image? Um, and um, I saw another person online who was completely... That's the image. We've just shown it on screen, which is that I think it's three Christmas uh, pa uh, paper hats. One Those red, hats, okay. one sort of silvery white and one green. Um, and a fireplace, and they withdrew that picture because people were offended. Did they withdraw the advert as well, or just the picture? No, just the picture. And they sent a long, gushing apology saying how sorry stupid, they were. stupid. But it's a conspiracy theory. You're meant to say conspiracy theories are stupid, not buy into them. And also, then, um, I saw someone online that... I think there was a close-up on Sophie Ellis-Bexter's eye during the advert, where she sort of looks at the at the... Uh, blowtorch to, 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 to look at the Christmas cards and because it's in blue and white then they thought that her eyeliner was pro-Israel and Have then, I literally woken up in the worst dream And of my then life? I read online someone saying that actually then Tan France throwing the board game into the, the sea was a reference to Palestinians <laughs> having to <laughs> having to go into the sea oh my god you'd um, have to you you or you you'd literally just do have to laugh you do have to laugh i and like, i wish i'd saved that tweet because it was so funny it was like a lot they someone had screenshot what someone had said on instagram and they like micro analyzed the whole advert and they'd found references and everything oh yeah and that's right and then hannah wadding's bit at the end uh, with all the confetti, you know, all those paper hats that became confetti when they were shredded, that was the the celebration of the Jews oh. for the genocide against the Palestinians. Right, right. I mean, it's... I mean, there are some people who, I say this with love, who just need to turn off the television every now and again and switch off the but internet. not now. Not now. <laughs> Don't <laughs> do, do it, that do now. It, do it at 8 a.m. <laughs> Is David um, on afterwards? Uh, David is on afterwards. Yeah, do it before as well. his show. And uh, yeah, do, do yeah, do it at seven o'clock. There's nothing on there. It's only drivel. Uh, okay, and uh, so um, yeah, you're getting some love this morning for some of your comments. That's so. nice. It's nice. Um, I do some. Uh, 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 Seb says, "Why are you going on about that advert? I hate Christmas nonsense." And so I love this ad. Christmas is about spending time with those you love, if you can. Many people spend Christmas alone. And if you spend Christmas alone, I very much hope that you're also spending Christmas with someone you love yourself. Oh, yeah, that's true. Who are you spending? Do you spend Christmas with someone, then? You said you love Christmas, right? Uh, I... So, I... So, we, I grew up, uh, you know, in a secular Jewish household, so we always had Christmas lunch, uh, as, as many, many Jewish families in this country. Funny enough, in America, that's... My cousins in America and Canada never did that, because those are much less kind of Christian countries in a way. Obviously, America is super Christian in lots yeah. of ways, but you can always find 
like sort of shops and, and restaurants open. And I think traditionally in America actually you have Chinese food on Christmas Day. Oh. Uh, and so sort of people go to Vegas and things like that. Um, but yeah, we always had Christmas lunch. Uh, we didn't have a Christmas tree, which I always wanted as a kid, but we had some sort of, um, hats and things and crackers and turkey. But that was um, that was only for my gran and my gran died. And so we don't we don't have really turkey anymore, which I kind of feel sad about because oh, I, love I enjoy it. Yeah, I love that. I actually really enjoy it. I love turkey. So who are you spending it with? This I'll be with my, yeah, I'll be with my mum and I think my sister away actually i'll just be with my mum and some various other waves and strays probably oh, that's nice uh, okay um another one here as well um if you look carefully sophie ellis bexter is just burning the free gas that is surrounding the christmas cards which is um a very environmentally friendly thing to do thank you um dean says i have the same rule as jonathan i don't do anything at Christmas until the 1st of December. If we all did this, Christmas would be so much more special and intense. Exactly, I, I, I exactly. actually completely Let's agree keep with it that. special. I love Christmas, you know, and I love, you know, in December, when I turn on the radio and I hear all of the old classics and kind of, yes, we've got three and a half weeks, actually four weeks, because it goes on, four and a bit weeks, because it goes on to the beginning of January. And let's just enjoy that. I agree. And kind of like tap into our ch- childhood, but it goes earlier and earlier. I know I sound like such no, a I, fool I, I, I say this. That I agree with you. It's, it's very depressing that the moment you switch on your television, on November the first, it started. Yeah, and I try and I try and 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 not. Yeah, I, like if as I well. hear a single Christmas advert, I'll switch it off. Yeah. I don't want to deal with this until December. Um, it's also my birthday on December 9th and so ideally I try and push it back to December tenth before I start engaging. Right, right. Um, because I want to get my birthday out Absolutely. of the way. Absolutely. Um, as uh, well, you should. Yeah, uh, but I didn't notice you marking that in your diary. Oh, in I wasn't aware that you told me. Was I supposed to December stalk 9th. you and found out? December 9th is my birthday. Isn't that also the have isn't that also the anniversary of Coronation Street starting? Yes. God, yes, it I'm, is. We are the gayest people you ever So met. two television legends born <laughs> on the same day. Sorry, that Thank is good. you well very done. much indeed. Um and also the same year, 1960. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. You're anyway, as old as Ken Barlow. Is. <laughs> Really nice to have had you here. Jonathan, Jonathan's <laughs> having to leave now, and uh, make sure you take his pass from him. He won't be <laughs> returning to the building, unfortunately. Uh, OK, um, when we come back, we're going to talk about whether these uh, marches should be cancelled on Armistice Day, and uh, uh, banks are tracking your carbon footprint in order to help you, which I have a feeling Jonathan will probably love. So all of that and more here on Talk TV.
morning. Now, uh, coming up, we're going to be talking about banks that are telling you to uh, cut your emissions after you can agree to them tracking your spending and they can give you some updates on your carbon footprint, which sounds brilliant, doesn't it? Not. So we'll talk about that. And uh, Jonathan List, the political commentator, is still here. Are you a political commentator, broadcaster, writer? What are you most? All of the above. Are you? Mm? You're like a triple threat. Quadruple, actually. Why? What's the fourth? Just all-round journalist. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you were cracking a joke. Uh, OK, now, Jonathan and I are in opposite corners politically, but if I see him at midnight mass, I would give the lefty a hug. Is that meant to be... Is that meant to... Are you meant to feel good about yourself for saying that? It's crossing it's just, the divide. It's, it's Christmas. I mean, why are people so... I would have no hesitation in wishing Happy Christmas to anybody. Why is it... It doesn't make well, you... he was afraid to give you a hug. Well, Do you take hugs off strangers? And, well, depends who they are, I suppose. Hugs are for free, my, my friend Andrew used to say. Uh, <laughs> Andrew sounds like he's very generous with his affections. <laughs> uh, OK, so, um, front page today of The Express says, hate marches are an affront to British values. This is the story uh, regarding this planned protest on Armistice Day. Um, Prime Minister saying yesterday that a large pro-Palestinian march would be both provocative and disrespectful. The Express understands he would prefer the protest in London not to go ahead at all. He warned of a risk to the Cenotaph and other war memorials and them being desecrated, which he said would be an affront to British values. Suella Braverman, uh, meanwhile, the Home Secretary, also spoke out describing the planned protest as a hate March. Uh, Mr Sunak's intervention comes amid warnings more than a million protesters are being urged to flood to London on November the 11th to denounce Israel's actions in Gaza. So it would be one week today. But also there are fears that any rally would spill over to the Sunday and clash with the traditional service at the Cenotaph and that the two-minute silence might be um, affected um, in some way. Um, what do you think? Jonathan List, should this be allowed to go ahead? Is it wrong to call it hate march? OK, well, simple answers. Um, yes, it is... Uh, yes, uh, it should be allowed to go ahead. No, it is not a hate march. Let me expand. First principles, I think that everyone should be respectful all the time, of course, and including at protests. Second of all, I think that... Um, if the protesters are sensible, and I'm not involved in the organisation of this protest, they will observe the uh, two-minute silence or uh, have the march after, which I suspect would be the easier option. Um, I've heard that um, they're actually not going to go. Uh, they're not planning to march at the centre half anyway. Um, so, obviously, I, I, I don't know that, I'm sure, but that's what I, that's what I read. Um, but I think the most important point... Well, let, actually, I'll come, to, I'll come to the most important point afterwards, but I think it's outrageous, absolutely outrageous, of Suella Bravman, who is the most divisive Home Secretary that we have ever had in this country, to smear hundreds of thousands of people as hateful for simply wanting an end to the bloodshed in Gaza. That is that is what they are. It is not this protest is not coming out of the blue. It's not a a protest against Jewish people. I would condemn it completely unequivocally if it was. It is not even a protest against Israel. It is a protest about the killing of civilians, nine thousand of whom have been killed in Gaza uh, through the bombardment in the last few weeks. That is what they are protesting about. They are protesting for a ceasefire and specifically for the UK's political leaders to call for a ceasefire and to impress that upon the Israeli government, whether or not that has any effect. And obviously, we, we cannot sort of overstate Britain's influence in that region. Obviously, the Israeli government will do what the Israeli government does. The US is obviously a much more important lever and influence, etc., on the Israeli government than the UK is. But the UK is not uh, irrelevant, and the UK has a voice. And it's um, calling for the UK to use that voice, but it's also protesting about innocent people being killed. No one is in favour of innocent people being killed. It is obviously not everyone agrees for a ceasefire. People are entitled to their different views, but it is completely despicable to call this a hate march based on a, a, a really small minority of people 
who might be waving objectionable placards or, or chanting objectionable things. That is a small minority. This is about right. a ceasefire. Um, I think that it's... it's it, there is nuance in a lot of this, and I think a lot of the conversations around this, the nuance is lost, and I find that really disheartening and frustrating. Um, I think that the issue with this march, I agree, I don't think her language is helpful to call it a hate march, even though there are many people on the right who agree with her on that. Um, so, for instance, Douglas Murray has tweeted to say... I wouldn't give any credence to what that far-right person says. Well, look, some of, some of what he says people agree with. He's saying that it's because it's a march for Hamas victory, it's the definition no, of a hate march. No, now, the problem... No, no, the no, problem is a completely despicable slur. The problem... The problem that... It is there with this march um, that will occur with this march is that there are going to be some people within that march not all, I absolutely agree it's a smear to say everyone because I, I've absolutely... It's a smear to call it a hate march, full stop it, I, I absolutely... And if you need Douglas Murray to make your case for you, not you personally, then you've completely lost the argument I think that um, it's, it's completely wrong, I think if someone is there uh, wanting to peacefully march to say, look, I want no more people killed then I've, I'd like, I'd, I'd, why would anyone object to that? I think it's absurd. Because Suella Braverman, because Suella Braverman is a racist and she's far right and she I mean, wants to and she wants to study okay, division stop, so that she stop, can exploit stop, stop. them. You cannot and benefit say from them. that she is just outright a racist. You cannot right. make that assertion because she's firstly she's not here to defend herself. Secondly, um, I think that to suggest that she is a racist, presumably based on the fact that you believe that she doesn't follow a narrative that is related to the, the fact that you feel... I don't know, do you think it's because of the colour of her skin? It's got nothing to do with it whatsoever. Absolutely irrelevant. But then what, what, does, what do you think she says that could be perceived as racist? I'm not going to say it's racist. I'm going to say could be perceived well, I'm saying, as I'm racist. Saying that she, well, I'm saying that she is a racist politician in her policies generally. In no, her policies could be about, perceived as racist. Well, I, well, I am... It's my opinion that she is. OK, but well, that I'd doesn't very... mean that you can say it without being challenged on it. So what well, do I'm you... Not saying what she, she, I'm not what saying... What does she say that well, you in believe... her, Well, in her what? Well, in her what? Well, we can talk about her, the entire government's policy on Rwanda, which I think is a racist policy, or when she talks about an invasion uh, of migrants... OK, well, that, that firstly, is... that's different to her being a racist. That's a policy. Right. Well, no, I'm, well, I'm... Well, she is... Um, she says it's her obsession and, secondly, and her dream and obsession to, would... to deport people to Rwanda. But, but if they are people... What, what has that got to do with someone's race? If they, if they, if they, if the Rwanda policy, which by the way I think is flawed, I'm not don't massive fan of the Rwanda policy. I think that it's that there are massive flaws to it, especially without a safe route to give you the moral high ground to come up with something so drastic. But that's another conversation. But but people aren't, wouldn't be sent to Rwanda based on their race. They would be be sent to Rwanda based on them coming here. No one's as sending you. Immigrant. No one is sending Ukrainians to Rwanda. I think we have to be absolutely clear about what this policy is, about what this government is is doing that's because with migrants. It, because that's right? because Ukrainians were given the opportunity. And why were they to given? And they were given that opportunity, which say Sudanese people have not been given. Afghan, Afghanistan it was meant to be a country um, where um, the government said yes, we will allow people in. There have been fewer than a hundred people let in under one of those schemes, which is and the government right, and that's which because, is the, because that's they're not brown. racism. It's because Why they're do you think brown. That's racism? Because they're brown. But also, there are there, it's the, the issue that you have with people who are coming in in the way in which you describe. By the way, I I agree that the way in which Afghanistan was dealt with, especially with people who helped us, is absolutely despicable. But that doesn't mean that that's because it they doesn't were necessarily brown. mean it. But I'm saying it does mean it in this case. Well, and I think that, listen, that well, she I, is a well, racist. I am asserting it. I am asserting it because it's my belief, based on what she says about invasions of migrants, a hurricane of migrants, how if these people in Palestine were white people, there would be such a global uproar about it. But because they are brown, frankly, they're white, their there lives are, are considered... There are white people that come over on those boats, though, that would also be eligible well, being... to go to Rwanda. So that's why what you're saying well, actually, is nonsense. actually very few of them, and and also, well, colour, colour race is not... Well, colour race is not race, race is not just about colour. I'm Jewish, I can be a victim of racism. Anti-Semitism is a form of racism, and many Jewish people are white. It's not just about the colour of your skin. Sometimes it is obviously about the colour of your skin, and Ukrainians are white Christians. Obviously, we 
should have opened our doors to them. We should have opened our doors to many more of them, actually. But there's a reason why countries like Poland are opening their doors to Ukrainians and closing them to anyone from Africa well, and Poland. Asia. But that's, but, that's, but that's part of it. And that is just a policy that is also being reflected in this okay, country but, where we're opening but, our doors to some people right, well, and shutting them to others. I have to, to respond others. to this. OK, the, the, the difference I see with the Ukrainians, which, by the way, we were, were extremely welcoming of, you're absolutely right, is that... Firstly, it was women and children. It was clearly women and children because men were staying behind in, in Ukraine. Secondly, we knew that immediately they were victims of the war. The problem when you have people who have come through multiple countries, including France, is that there the is Ukrainians a Ukrainians came through multiple countries as well. Yes, but, but, but Ukraine was under attack before our eyes saying, immediately. Look, look. No, but no, when you, me, when me, the government does allow... The point, let me finish the point. But the problem is that when you have other... Uh, when you have people, and this is a problem with processing, I absolutely get it, but when you have people that have come from multiple other countries that have come through, some of whom are genuine, I think the ones that have come on boats, I think it's about a rate of about 60% that actually get genuine asylum when they have finally been protested. 75% uh, last year. Uh, process. It depends. Uh, well, it, OK, well, if that, those might be last year's figures. I think up till then it had been about 60. That means that at least a quarter, maybe more, aren't genuine asylum seekers in the eyes of their application to the government. So that's a different situation So what's the point? To Ukraine. What's, what's the point? They have to... The, the point is that they have to get here in order to claim asylum and then their claims are processed. So that's... The fact well, that it's 75%... Well, that the fact that it's 75% is, is... It means that the majority of them are... Right, there should be safe and legal routes. And the reason there aren't safe and legal routes is the government doesn't actually care very much about them. And they'd much rather appear tough on immigration than actually help to save but that lives. But doesn't, that doesn't make... Suella Braverman. I'm not saying racist. that one one of those that's one exactly of those what things. You just said. I'm, I'm, I, I said that I said that the whole absolutely not the whole panoply. I think that's outrageous. The whole panoply of policies that she is advocating, the language that she is using about invasions, about hurricanes, about sort of the failure of multiculturalism. These are all dog whistles that she is using to stoke divisions quite deliberately, quite cynically, that's, I think to that's stoke outrageous. divisions I'm, and discord, so that she can personally benefit from them and exploit them after the Conservatives' electoral drubbing, so that she can become leader of her party. It is completely outrageous and it's nothing to do with her skin colour whatsoever. I think that that's outrageous. You can say, I think it's an absolutely reasonable comment to say, look, there would, could be a perception that the policy she's advocating for... It's not a perception, it's, it's my absolute belief that well, she fine. is... That, that, well, that, that those well, policies belief, are racist it's, and that she is... You can't state it as fact. It's a belief. You cannot state it as fact that she is racist. You could say it is my belief. When that's someone not says, what you said. When someone says something, it's implicit. Clearly that's my belief uh it's you know it, it's, it's not yet been proven in a court of law if she wants to sue great, me for it so then great let's have well, let's she have that sue let's... you she'd sue talk tv for us allowing you to uh, spout such nonsense if she being wants unchallenged. to challenge well well, and it that's hasn't, why it hasn't, it hasn't been unchallenged. I'm very happy for it to be challenged, but the government's policies are racist. That's a, different, that's a different thing to calling out. She I, is responsible for them. She, it's a collective She's the Home Secretary in charge of there this policy. A collective and when she talks about hate marches, when she talks about hate marches, she knows exactly I, what again, she's doing. Because this, no, this you is. You are employing no nuance. The nuance that you want to be employed in some of these arguments, you are not employing yourself at all. First, Firstly, she is not solely responsible for every single policy. Secondly, um, to I agree with you that some of her language is not helpful. And also, I think you can say, look, I believe the government is presiding over policies that I believe are racist. If you want to say that, fine. What I have a problem with is you specifically saying Suella Braverman is racist, stating that as as if it's some sort of... of, of it's of my... It's, it, I think that, no, that is semantics. That's not nuance, that's semantics. You're saying... You're, there's a difference between you saying there's a difference between there's a difference between you saying you know as a, as someone saying Suella Braben is racist and I believe Suella Braben is racist. Most, yeah, people, are, there would, is a most people would understand. Most people would understand that it's well, if I was Suella Braben listening it's implicit to that, in I don't, a statement if, that it's a, the belief of the person saying it. I I if I was Suella Braben, I would like that distinction made. That's all I'm saying. If I heard someone saying Christo Fufas is a racist. 
I would say, well, hang on, why are you thinking that? Why aren't you being challenged on that? I would want to know, OK, oh, actually, what it is is that Christo Fufas is part of a government that I believe has is racist responsible policies. for racist policies. No, she's not solely responsible. She's the Home also, Secretary. That is a perception. She's the Home you Secretary. You cannot state that as fact. It is a perception. In her language, no one's, no one's forced her to there use the language many, that she's used. Many there is people. racist language that she has used. No one has forced her to use it. She's chosen they to use are, it. There's not a cigarette paper between her policies there and are the policies of people, people like Georgia Maloney, the alternative for Deutschland, um, people like Marine Le Pen, who the BBC has absolutely no hesitation in calling far right, but they don't call her far right, even though there's not a cigarette paper between her position and theirs. There are many people that, that do not believe that she is a racist. Well, there then are... they're entitled to their opinion. I'm entitled to mine. You are entitled to yours, but I can't allow it to go. I'm you haven't allowed it to go. No, I know, but Fine. I'm explaining but I'm, but to I'm, you But why. I disagree with you, and I, I simply disagree with you that someone's saying this person is racist is materially different from saying I believe this person is racist. Clearly, when you are ser making that assertion, you're, it's your belief. It's not, there's not, like, it's not sort of a mathematical sort of equation where something is either true or it isn't. I think clearly that under my understanding, and I have studied race I literally have a degree in it, um, that that is absolutely my belief and in, in taken in the context of right. her language now and her policies. Now, now you've clarified it and you have... have then, then, well, I still don't think it's a nice thing to say. And I still don't it's not, it's not a nice it. thing to say. I She's not a agree, nice politician. I don't agree with you saying that. I don't agree with you saying that at all. But you have clarified it is your perception that she is. And... It's my concrete belief, based on my expertise of this issue, which has been, which is long founded, that she is a racist. And I, and I will say that if she were here, she would. Of argue course she would. Of course she would argue. Let of course she would finish. argue against it. Let me finish. If she were here, she would argue vehemently that she is not. She would say that her policies and the policies that she is a part of, presiding over, are, are representative of what many people in this country want. She would argue that the policies that she's come up with regarding Rwanda and the like are not based on people's race. She would argue that your point about Ukraine is different to people coming over here in boats that have come from a safe country. And she would argue that... Because she allowed oh, them well, to Hang on, over. let me finish. And she would argue that the language she is using is OK. Now, you could disagree with her? Fine. But that is what I am saying she would argue if she was here. And when we return, we'll have some of your texts and tweets that are reacting to what Jonathan has said this morning, all here on Talk TV. Everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Very impressive. Well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Ah! <laughs> me and you, conquer time. Who Bye. wins? You. Do you know what I love about tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech rating for Rishi Sunak? <laughs> I'm so rich. <laughs> but, uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What, do you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis Sanz? No, I am Sanz. not. Stop pandering to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers, and the National Society for the Preservation of the Habitat of the Lesser Spotted Newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Yeah. It's that almost that like those highly done. paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. First thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah. Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> so are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google and Facebook and X, uh, formerly known as Twitter? Where is, our, where is our unbiased news going to come from? Welcome to the talk. It's really great to be back. My little darlings. Mm. Kids think all they have to do is stay at home, be silly, mm -hmm. take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok then, yeah? Problem oh, solved. Yeah. Problem solved. There you go. He's fit as a butcher's dog. Him. Oh, right. <laughs> but, but he's now middle class. Three of us here, Tess. <laughs> but I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know now you're probably going to boot me off the show after this <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. <laughs> Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. <laughs> 
got former PMs all over the joint saying things the last few days. They have indeed, yeah. <laughs> Great first show. You having fun? Oh, a ton of fun. Yes. King Piers and King Cube. I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. When I say I am God, you think I'm joking or not? You tell me. I'm not joking. I'd rather do it on camera. No, 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 no. no. If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Why? We'll explain why. How do you feel about that influence that you have? You better be careful. We're coming for your children there, buddy. About my resignation, yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yeah, I'm going. I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Thank God for Talk TV is not only the home of common sense, it's the only place where you get the truth. Morning, is Christo here on Talk TV. And uh, uh, interesting um, words from Jonathan List, the political commentator, is still here. Hi, Jonathan. Hey. Nice to have you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being here, uh, I think. Um, OK, uh, a few tweets and texts that are disagreeing vehemently with your assertion... I would never predict that. ..that your perception that uh, Suella Braverman um, is uh, presiding over racist policies, thereby sort of spilling over to her uh, your perception that she is racist herself. Um, Jonathan has to accept that the majority of UK taxpayers are behind Suella Braverman because we've had enough of lefty loonies and anti-British ideologies. I'll let you respond to these, by the way. I'm going to do a few of them and then you can respond, all right? Um, uh, the, another one here as well. Typical um, uh, left-wing political answer to something they don't agree with, call them a racist. Um, the only racist, that was uh, uh, one there from Richard. Um, Deb, the only racist I can hear is this morning is the idiot you're speaking to. I've nearly broken a rib laughing at his nonsense um, as well. Uh, Dan says, anyone who disagrees with Jonathan is a racist. Um, never laugh so much at this garbage. I mean, people... When have I ever said that? When have I, when have I called any, anyone who disagrees with me a racist? Well, when I think that's I the perception that? of when what I, you're saying by not... It's, it's, not, it's not a perception. I haven't called anyone else a racist in this um, And Diane says, you cannot compare the Ukraine situation with thousands of men channel hopping. Immigration is out of control. I love Suella. Um, what would you say to those people that that absolutely disagree with what you're saying about all of this? I would say that I disagree with them and I choose my words carefully. Um, I don't say that wanting to um, control immigration is itself racist. I never have. I've never said that it is uh, that everyone uh, in the world should be allowed into Britain or any of those smears that people level against um, people like me who support a more compassionate and humane immigration refugee policy. My policy is that um, actually economic migration, which is obviously like the the you know the the, the evil words. I mean, these aren't these aren't refugees. These asylum seekers, legitimate asylum seekers, economic migrants. Economic migration is a good thing. It always has been a good thing, and that we should allow refugees safe and legal routes to come here. Uh, and this idea about sort of washing our hands of the um, uh, asylum system and deporting them to Rwanda is a racist well, policy and it's not anti-British to make points that people might disagree uh, with. I, I would never label those people anti-British. I would expect the same courtesy to myself. I think that those are all fair points. If you want that to be your position, absolutely reasonable. I think it's the jump that, that um, by not having that, that... Um, Suella Braverman, in your perception, is racist. Listen, I don't know... I think, I think that's I don't, the problem listen, people have. Christo, Christo, I don't know what goes on inside anyone's head or heart, OK? All I know is what public figures say on the record. And Suella Braverman, to my mind, is a deeply divisive, deeply cynical individual who is putting forward deeply hostile, racist policies that it would exclude anyone effectively from claiming asylum in this country it is completely despicable and i think sometimes we have to call a spade a spade so and that is actually who, something who that is something she's racist against a lot of people from africa and asia who are trying to come to this but country about, but those aren't exclusively the only people well, trying to no, come to this country but, but the people apart apart from the Albanians, who you said, and that is also, and I've already explained, that racism isn't only against non-white people. So white she's people also, can in, be, your, in your perception, then, there's, there's, these there's are, an argument these are, she could be racist are, against Albanians are, as well? 
Well, clearly, if you are implementing a policy that's going to be excluding people who you consider inferior in some way, and that you are letting other people in, this other category of people in, um, then that is going to be that is going to be a, a, a racial element, in so, my view. So, so I mean, I just think that that's such a. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to bring the temperature down a bit of this conversation, but I just think that that's such a divisive view that you have there. I don't think it's a divisive. Well, hang on, class. you've got to have to let me finish a sentence, Jonathan. Um, that because you're basically saying that because essentially an exception was made for Ukraine and it was so and it was done so quickly and so efficiently. Um, by the way, Ukraine under direct threat at that point, and there was no question that the Ukrainians were Ukrainian and 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 were who they said they were, and were women and children who were who were uh, affected by it because it was mainly women and children as well. Because of that, all the other people in the world that we have restrictions on by being able to come here as refugees. That makes us, uh, 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 our government, or Suella Braverman, racist against all of those other people. White people are not, white Christian people are not coming in on the boats, OK? White Christian people, apart from Ukraine, Ukrainians, are not in the main refugees, or in any way, and obviously Albanians are not actually Christian, the vast majority of them are Muslim, by the way. And so the government has a policy where this one category was allowed in, but when you have something in Sudan happening, for example, there is no question that those people would be allowed um, sort of exception, exceptional routes in. And when you had an exceptional route, Afghanistan, actually very, very few people were allowed into this country under that scheme, even though we owed that country an enormous debt I, after we've been in that I, country I, I for a long time. We I left those, we left those people. That. We completely abandoned those people. And that's that why you have a, so many of the people who are coming across on the boats are actually Afghan. And if there were white people, um, white Christian people, we would have looked after them. That is my contention. That is why I, I believe I, it's I, Okay, now, and uh, my argument would be that the, the people who were allowed in from Ukraine, it wasn't because they were white Christian, it was because it was clear that they were under a direct threat there and then. It was clear they'd not passed through uh, on multiple other countries and we weren't sure whether they were genuine or whether they were wanting to be an economic migrant we could see we could see that they were mainly women and children whereas those other places you've spoken about by the way Afghanistan I agree with you I think it's absolutely outrageous the way we treated people from Afghanistan that helped us we should have done much more to make sure that they could come here that was completely wrong my point is that just because we haven't helped every other place where there is an issue in the world but we helped Ukraine there's a big jump from that to us or having a home secretary that is a racist that's the point i'm making well i've already explained yeah, and you why, disagree with i've that. already explained why you know you have people from afghanistan if those people were white they would have given exact been given exactly the same exception as white ukrainians and when sudanese people were under major attack earlier in the year they were not granted the same privilege and of course there's absolutely no question that civilians in gaza are going to be given a special scheme to flee the fighting and to be allowed into britain under any kind of scheme the idea it, it would be seen as completely ridiculous if it's even mentioned but of course if those people were white and christian we might be having a different conversation so your your, your argument is that the ukrainians you don't accept my argument that, that it was very clear that they were under a direct threat there and then. There was a proximity to the UK, that it was mainly women and children. There was no question that, the, that they were under that threat so that we knew that they were genuine. You don't accept that as the reason they were brought over immediately. You believe it's because they were white and Christian. I believe that because they were white and Christian, they represented the kind of refugee that the UK government thought was acceptable and qualified for compassion. Well, and I would argue that they and would other say, people uh, yeah, don't. And I would argue that that would be because they were believed to be genuine. Well, I'm sorry, and they, but I would, I would, I would argue you. that they believed they were believed to be genuine, and they happened to a be lot of white people. A lot of people are genuine refugees, Chris. So a lot of people yes, are but, genuinely but under attack. Can, but, it, but we are under strain at the moment. And again, I accept. Um, a lot of the strain that we're under is because of the government's incompetence about the about processing people fast enough. But the the difference is that a lot of the people who come here are uh, are not genuine and wouldn't have their asylum seems Well, the only way that you can establish uh, that is by allowing them safe and legal routes so they can claim asylum and have that 
checked but by then, a committee. But, but then how do, we, how do we allow that to keep happening when we're spending so much on processing people and, and housing people and keeping them? At the moment, we're spending, like, what is it, six, seven, eight million pounds a day? You could have, process, as I've said on this programme many, many times, you could have processing centres in France allow people to claim asylum outside of the UK and then once those claims were granted, you could then give them safe and legal routes to come here given that the vast majority of them are given asylum when they actually come I, here anyway through unsafe and unlawful means. I, by the way, again, I agree. I think a lot of people listening would say, look, if we had a processing centre in France, it would solve a million problems that we have at the moment. I just, again, I will stress, it's the jump between those things not happening, which, by the way, Labour never did, previous Home Secretaries never did, many, many... The backlog was a lot less under the Labour. Uh, but may have been less under Labour, but by your logic, those things not happening would have also made those previous Labour Home Secretaries racist. Because what no, you no 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 why, because, would, why? no because it's about it's about language it's about culture it's the whole um, sort of orbit and umbrella of the hostile environment, obviously pioneered by Theresa May. Started under Labour, hostile environment started under Labour. Well, well, the, the term hostile environment came in under the coalition. So, oh, so, uh, under, now under you talk Therese, about semantics. Under Therese, now, under now you May, to and also, talk about semantics. And also, I'm not here to defend um, the policies of David Blunkett and Jack Straw at all. Well, then, but, but my logic is that they would also be racists too. No, because, because that's they not, didn't do any of the because things. Because well, I don't think that any of them were planning to deport people to Rwanda, for example, or sort of absent them or you know absolve themselves from a global asylum regime. For okay, example. well, I would just say one last time that uh, there would be a big jump between what you have described not happening and some of the failings. Some of them are legitimate, by the way, that the failings you're describing, and Suella Braverman, um, the perception that she is a racist. But there we go. Um, dear God, I think I'm actually quite pleased to see you. <laughs> Very good morning oh, to you. You've actually managed to do so, that, Jonathan. So I was downstairs and I heard my name being mentioned and I, I couldn't quite hear what you two were talking about, but no doubt it was... It was, it was, it was, it was all complimentary. Oh, was it? It's not no, awesome. okay. I see you've got your Christmas jumper on. That's very nice. So. <laughs> Just, uh, I'm going to burn it like the animal sample. <laughs> we'll take a blowtorch to you in a minute. <laughs> yes, that advert, awful. Hated it. Um, oh, oh I'm sorry about your Christmas, by the way. Go on. Oh, did you know that your mum called me? Oh, she's spending it with me. She listened to the <laughs> drivel you put on after seven and she's like, I can't bear to be with I, him. I don't think that's accurate, so but she's, OK. She's, she's So, table for one alone for you in the corner. <laughs> As usual. You know, yeah. gin and tonic and regret. <laughs> be who you're spending you made that joke so many times. I know, it's my usual diet anyway. He likes his own jokes. Mm. But, I love uh, my own jokes. Someone yeah. has to laugh. A nice haircut, them. though. You obviously got your money's worth. Yeah, thank um, you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. You're welcome, you're welcome. I, know, I, I, I have a very busy show for you actually yesterday so after the show yesterday morning i went home and i think like many people were sitting there watching what uh, what hezbollah was going to say and i was rather pleased that i felt it didn't it, it was a lot of I, a saber rattling i suppose and fortunately it looks like it hasn't escalated any further so we'll talk more about what what that speech by hezbollah actually means keir starmer will you stay firm in terms of his response, obviously he's got a bit of a backbench rebellion going on and the leaders of two councils now saying he needs to resign. And I just wonder whether Starmer will stay, stay strong, whether he will stick with the line that there needs to be a humanitarian pause rather than an all-out ceasefire. Yeah, which would seem 